Hello everyone, welcome back to Z Physics. Welcome back to another video. What we're going to be talking about today is stellar evolution. Now let's have a look at a star which is similar in terms of mass to the actual sun. During the main sequence part of the star's life cycle, the star will be fusing hydrogen nuclei into helium and it will be shining away. Now during this time, the radiation pressure is in perfect balance with the gravitational forces which are trying to crush the star. Now, eventually, the hydrogen that is fueling the radiation pressure will run out. When the hydrogen runs out, then the radiation pressure is suddenly taken away. And what actually happens is that the star collapses even further due to the uh, immense gravitational forces which are acting on it. During that collapse, more gravitational energy is being converted to kinetic energy and the temperature rises even further. So the temperature increases one more time and during that temperature increase we can reach up to 10 to the 8, even 10 to the 9 Kelvin. The core actually turns into what is known as a superheated state and during that superheated state in the core we can actually fuse helium into heavier elements. Because the core is now over a hundred times hotter, the outer layers of the stars start to expand and the star forms one of those which is a red giant. The very outer layers have actually expanded and cooled off and that's why the star has changed color and uh, is now a red giant. The star will remain in this, uh, in this state for a while, a much shorter time compared to the main sequence uh, life cycle of the star and it will eventually run out of helium. After the star runs out of helium fuel, the star will collapse, so gravity will win one more time and the star is going to form a planetary nebula and then it will form a white dwarf. A white dwarf star has several important characteristics. Number one, it is extremely dense. So normally you would have a material or a mass similar to that of the mass of the sun that's been compressed into a volume similar to a planet. So white dwarf is, uh, is extremely dense and it also has a small volume. Additionally, what's opposing the uh, crushing force of gravity in a white dwarf star is a phenomenon known as electron degeneracy pressure. It turns out that once a, all this mass is compressed, it's the actual electrons themselves that are responsible for opposing the crushing effect of gravitation. There's a principle in physics known as Pauli's uh, exclusion principle which says that no two electrons can occupy the same quantum state. In other words, uh, electrons they do really do not like um, being very very close to each other and definitely not in the same space. And the electron degeneracy pressure in this case um, provides a, um, a stable opposition to the crushing effect of the gravitational force. It is very important to note that a star will end its life cycle as a white dwarf only if it's below the Chandra second limit. So this is equal to 
for solar masses. So um, if the star is below that amount in mass, it will finish its life cycle as a white dwarf. Now join us for the next video in which we're going to look at the uh, life cycle of stars which are considerably heavier than the sun. Okay, folks, thank you very much for watching, and if there are any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below, and please consider subscribing.